it's yo girl the word of god girl and we finna eat come sup with me come sup with me what's up y'all it's yo girl it is word of god girl i want to thank everybody who watches my videos and allows me to share with you what it is that God has placed on my heart. This video is for adults. It is for grown folk. It is not for our children or tater pots as I call them. That being said, I am excited to have this conversation. The word of God is incredible. It is our guide and it is filled with the keys to having a successful life. God wrote the Bible for us specifically and on purpose. How do I know that? Because in 2 Timothy 3 and 16 it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible is concrete. It is the most complete book I have ever read. And God does not want us confused about anything. The Bible talks about sex very specifically and on purpose. Most of us enjoy sex. We can verify that by observing the world's population. Uh, it is not slack there are plenty of us on the planet we finna get into the specific details about sex right now now is a good time for me to say grab your bibles please visit your phone's app store and download a bible there if you do not have one i read the king james version of the bible and have put the scriptures from today inside of the description box for my note takers now is a good time Grab your pen and your paper. We finna eat. All right, y'all. So we are in Genesis 34. And here we have a story about a girl and a guy. And y'all, this story is gangster. And it's not the gangster part of the story that I love. But what I love about this story is what it reveals to us. So in the story, the girl is out visiting with some other young ladies. The guy who happens to be a prince sees her. They get together, they go and they have sex. Now, what's interesting to me is that the Bible says that the sex defiled her and not them. Um, but we know that sex before marriage is fornication. Fornication is sin. And sin separates us from God. I also want to point out that the sex was consensual. And how do I know that? There is another story in the Bible about a girl and a guy. And the girl says to the guy, she actually says, nay or no, I do not want to do this thing. But the Bible says he forced her. So we understand that when the word forced is used, it is not consensual. Um, but we don't see any of that here. What we do see and what we do understand is that they go together and they sleep together. And then what happens next? In Genesis 34 and 3, it says, His soul, his soul clave unto her. And he fell in love. And so much so that in Genesis 34 and 4, he told his dad to go and get the girl so that he could make her his wife. Okay, I got to make some more points. Having sex does not make you a married couple. Now that's verified for us in the story that we're reading right now. But it's also validated by a scripture that says, If a man lies with a woman that is unbetrothed, surely he shall make her his wife. So that was true for back in the biblical times. And it's also true in 20 and 21. Because in 2021, when you are married, there is an exchange of vows before God, usually in the presence of family and friends. Um, your names are tied when you are married. Your credit is tied. 
Uh, your names are linked together. You're able to make decisions on each other's behalf. And uh, also there's a title that comes with being married, um, husband and wife, right, husband and wife. So we see those things and then there's something really important that occurs. According to the word of God, the Bible says that when someone is married, it says that the twain, which means two, become one flesh. Now that one that it is talking about is the same one that Jesus is talking about when he says, I and my father are one. So there is a spiritual covenant that you enter into when you are married. I also want to point out that you do not know what is going to happen to you when you sleep with someone. Now, it could be like what happens to the guy in this story. He sleeps with the girl. He falls in love with the girl. He wants to marry the girl. I mean, and him wanting to marry her is a good thing. He should have done it correctly. He should have married her first, but he didn't, but he did try to fix it. Coincidentally, his decision to sleep with her prematurely or before they were married cost him everything. And not just him, but every man in that city. So the point is, is you don't know what feelings, what emotions you're going to create from sleeping with someone. Therefore, it is to your benefit. It is in your best interest to only have sex with your husband or your wife, with your spouse. Now, remember when I said that the Bible is complete and that God does not want us confused about anything? God is a genius. <laughs> and he tells us how to avoid sexual encounters before we are married. All we have to do, y'all, is listen. Check this out. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 and 2, and of course I'm going to start off with verse 1, it says, Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And y'all, I love this scripture because God is saying, he knows, he understands that when he made man for woman and woman for man, if you but touch, if you only touch, because it doesn't take much. If you are attracted to someone like that, touching leads to other things. Then he goes on to say in verse 2, and this part is the icing on the cake for me. He says, nevertheless, in other words, I know I told you not to touch, but since you're going to touch, mm, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. So how do we make sure we are only sleeping with our husbands and our wives? The Bible says in Proverbs 18 and 22, it says, he who findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Now, a lot of people stop reading the scripture there, but if you continue reading it, it says, and obtains favor from the Lord. So you have found the woman of your dreams that God has purposed for you. And then God turns around and he gives you the gift of favor with him too. Y'all, that is the wedding gift of wedding gifts. And I want to say something else about marriage. Um, marriage has its perks. And sex is a privilege. Yes, I know. I said sex is a privilege. But I mean, what is a privilege? What is the definition of privilege? Let's see. It says, um, a privilege is a special right or entitlement, advantage or immunity only available to a particular person or group. Now, I understand that people are doing it outside of marriage, but people are doing a lot of stuff right now and that don't make it right. And most importantly, God does not approve. And you are accountable to yourself and you are accountable to God. As a GP, which is a God pleaser, we understand that sex 
definitely has a place. God made sex for us. But the place that we are to enjoy sex is within the confines of marriage. It is when you are married. Hebrews 13 and 4 says this, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. It says, But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So let me provide some clarity about this scripture. This scripture is telling us that the bed between married people, the word undefiled means pure or clean. It is telling us that that bed that they share is a pure bed. It's a clean bed um, because of the fact that they are married. If they were fornicators, which are unmarried people that are sleeping with, with each other, then the bed would be defiled or dirty. That's why it goes on to say that uh, whoremongerers, and a whoremongerer is a sexually promiscuous person, but it specifically deals with a man who's sleeping with prostitutes, um, and adulterers and adulterers are people that are married to a spouse but they are having sex with people that are not their spouses that's not their husband or their wife it says those type of people God will judge this scripture guys is not giving us instruction to practice sodomy and what is sodomy sodomy is anal sex what does God's word say about it? Okay, so in 1 Kings 14 and 24, it says, And there were sodomites in the land, and they did all the abominations which the Lord had cast out of Israel. And abominations are things that God hates. They are things that God is dis disgusted by. Then in 1 Kings 15 and 12, it says, And he took away the Sodomites out of the land and removed all the idols his father had made. And then, of course, you guys, you know the story that I've talked about before in another video. It's the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And in this particular story, the people were practicing lewd sexual acts and activities. And as a result of that, God destroyed the whole entire city by fire. Sodom, Sodomites, and Sodomy, all of those words relate to the act of penetrating the anus during sex. Now, my thought is this. God gave a woman her sexual part. He gave a man his sexual part. When those two parts come together, life is created. Um, and those things are required. The woman's part and the man's part are required for being fruitful and multiplying, which is one of the first instructions that God gave us. Then also, the anus or the butt is specific to no one because everybody, whether you're a man or a woman, has a butt. And God's original purpose or design for the butt or the anus uh, is for the elimination of waste. Yeah. Um, one other perversion that I'm going to touch on, that I have to touch on, is bestiology. Uh, wow. Okay, so bestiology is when uh, a man or a woman no longer wants to have sexual relations with a human being. Um, they're tired of that, so they go on and they decide to have sex with an animal. Uh, bestiology is covered in Leviticus 20, 15, and 16. And the Bible says both the person and the animal participating in this type of activity are to be killed. Yeah, bestiology is a no-go for sure. And then another thing that I think also is that we shouldn't even be watching perversions like this because remember the things that you watch the things that you hear they plant seeds now i'm not saying that if you watch bestiology that you're going to go out and have sex with an animal however we have to be very particular about what we allow into our eye and our ear gates listen 
we want to find ourselves inside the will of God consistently. I started out this video saying sex is enjoyable, um, but it's more than that. It is an amazing part of the covenant of marriage that God gave to a woman and a man between a husband and a wife. Sex is God's means for the continuation of life. The Bible says there is nothing new under the sun. And then in 1 Corinthians 7 and 9, it says, it is better to marry than to burn. And the burn that it's talking about is not just the burn of, I've kissed and I've touched and now I'm ready for the rest. It is also talking about the burn of hell's eternal fire. Sex, canoodling, lovemaking, whatever it is that you call it, does not have to equate to your demise. It does not have to equal your destruction. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 4 and 9, two are better than one. We were put here to be married. God made man for woman and woman for man. To have children, to be beautiful families. This is God's system, no question. However, when we attempt to recreate to modify what God has already done, we create confusion and chaos. God does not need our help with how to do this thing called life right. He's good, y'all. I mean, literally as in God is good, but also as in God is sovereign. He desires our compliance and he wants us to walk in accordance to and with his word. And he wrote the Bible for us. Remember the old saying that said, uh, you can't miss what you never had. Now think about that, trip off that, because that's actually one of the truest statements that I think has been made. If you never experience something, you don't know what the experience is, so you won't miss it. Therefore, what I'm gonna say is, is save the kissing and the touching for your wedding day or night that's when god approves that's when the time or the mood is right <laughs> until next time continue to eat sleep drink the word of god because it's everything guys share this video be a blessing Subscribe to my walk channel if you have not already done so. Hit the notification bell so you know when I upload. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up and God bless.